Chapter 3 She can't be ours. Her atrocious aunt had deprived the child of all her gravity. If you ask me how this was affected, I answer, in the easiest way in the world. She only had to destroy gravitation, for the princess was a philosopher and knew all the ins and outs of the laws of gravitation, as well as the ins and outs of her bootlace. And being a witch as well, she could abrogate those laws in a moment, or at least so clog their wheels and rust their bearings that they would not work at all. But we have more to do with what followed than how it was done. The first awkwardness that resulted from this unhappy privation was that the moment the nurse began to float the baby up and down, she flew from her arms towards the ceiling. Happily, the resistance of the air brought her ascending career to a close within a foot of it. There she remained, horizontal, as when she left her nurse's arms, kicking and laughing amazingly. The nurse, in terror, flew to the bell and begged the footman who answered it to bring up the house steps directly. Trembling in every limb, she climbed upon the steps and had to stand upon the very top and reach up before she could catch the floating tail of the baby's long clothes. When the strange fact came to be known, there was a terrible commotion in the palace. The occasion of its discovery by the king was naturally a repetition of the nurse's experience. Astonished that he felt no weight when the child was laid in his arms, he began to wave her up and not down for she slowly ascended to the ceiling as before, and there remained, floating in perfect comfort and satisfaction, as was testified by her peals of tiny laughter. The king stood, staring up in speechless amazement, and trembled so that his beard shook like grass in the wind. At last, turning to the queen, who was just as horror-struck as himself, he said, gasping, staring, and stammering, she can't be ours, Queen. Now the Queen was much cleverer than the King, and had begun already to suspect that this defect came by cause. I'm sure she is ours, answered she, but we ought to have taken better care of her at the christening. People who were never invited ought not to have been present. Oh no, said the King, tapping his forehead with his forefinger. I have it all. I found her out. Don't you see it, Queen? Princess Maycomnoit has bewitched her. That's just what I say, answered the Queen. I beg your pardon, my love. I did not hear you. John, bring the steps I want to get on my throne with. For he was a little king, with a great throne, like many other kings. The throne steps were brought, and set upon the dining table, and John got upon the top of them, but he could not reach the little princess who lay like a baby laughter cloud in the sky, exploding continuously. Take the tongs, John, said his majesty, and getting up on the table, he handed them to him. John could reach the baby now, and the little princess was handed down by the tongs.